content being devalued, links mm -hmm. potentially not being a top three ranking factor. You can just use this tool now. You don't need writers, people firing off the writing teams. Have you got any plans to integrate AI yourselves into a service office? Zero percent tolerance on using AI. Fifty percent drop in content sales. What do you think okay. is the future for SEO agencies as a whole? <laughs> He worked in several SEO jobs for opening one of the biggest link building agencies and content agencies in the industry 11 years ago now. You employ over 40 people in the UK. You donate a portion of your portion of your profits to a different charity every single month. You launched the Query Hunter plugin, which has blown up with some seriously good upgrades, to be fair, um, recently. And you've been building up your personal brand in the industry as well. So would you like to introduce yourself? Joe Davies, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Charles. Cheers. Yeah, so I'm Joe Davis. Uh, I operate Fat Joe. Uh, it's an SEO services platform for SEO agencies. Uh, I've been in SEO since 2006, around that time. Um, done many jobs uh, within in-house agency, done some affiliate stuff, consultancy. And it led me to the path of creating Fat Joe, which was essentially a solution for myself, a solution I needed a good service provider. So that's what led me to here today. Awesome. So you you really go down the model of being a productized agency. And I think that is something that a lot of people in the SEO industry probably could be more going down that route because a lot of, unfortunately, they seem to have this issue where they don't have proper cash flow management. They don't have contracts. Yep. They don't have anything properly. So it, it leads to this you know, cash flow management issues, management issues, employee issues, payroll issues, just tons of issues all around because you don't, you, you can't accurately track or or predict how much profit you're going to make, where it's a lot easier to do that when you have got a specific product that you know is going to make a hundred dollars profit or a thousand dollars profit every time you exactly. sell it, right? Um, so how much overlap are you seeing with orders when you, when you launch a new service? Um, and then how have you launched any new services? Because I know you've, you've got loads of services now. There's like about 14 yeah. or 15 services on the website. Have you seen any specific service be a real driving force in sales? And then have you seen yeah. any services be overlapping on in sales with any other services as well? So you mean overlapping people coming in and ordering content writing and they'll, they'll order link building afterwards? That kind exactly. of overlap. Yeah. And, and then yeah. A, a, just a new service that drives loads of new customers that you probably didn't expect as well. Yeah, so um, we, we've we got obviously link building, which we're known for, and then we've got content writing, which we're also known for. Um, we've got 100 content writers. Um, people, some agencies come in on content writing and then they end up ordering link building. Some agencies come in on link building, they end up ordering content writing. Then we've also got some extra services like video, explainer videos. Not many people know we do those, but they're, they're actually really, really good. Uh, we've got a service called blog to video where... If someone orders a piece of content, they can turn that content into a blog post, uh, sorry, into a video, like an explainer video. So they can put it on um, YouTube and things like that. Uh, we've actually got a service called Blog Content Plan. And this plans out all of your content, like 200 blog posts. And you can take that plan and you can order content with it. So that's a good way of us getting, you know, it's sort of a loss leader to get content orders. So, yeah, we see a lot of overlap. Um, but generally, yeah, we, we're mostly known for the link building and the, and the content services. Yeah, hundred percent. That's what I think most people in the kind of industry know your brand for. And that's why I also think that there's not much association with the other services that you guys have offered. Um, so I know that you guys do use outsourcing and use VAs and things. How much outsourcing are you doing within your business, right? How many VAs do you, do you know how many VAs you've got nowadays? Um, and then which countries have you found are the, are the best remote workers in? Yeah, so so obviously we're we're very big advocates for outsourcing work. I mean, it's our whole it's our whole philosophy. We we tell agencies to do it all the time. You should be outsourcing the deliverables, and we're no exception. We we also outsource. We have a big team of contractors. Um, so our whole writing force is freelancers. You know, they're all contracted. Uh, we have about a hundred content writers, and then we've got an outreach team. So obviously, because we're doing so much link building, we need to outreach to thousands and thousands of blogs every single day um and we've got an outreach team of maybe 10 12 people now uh, a couple in the uk who are managing that team but mostly it's it's uh contractors 
And then we've got designers, developers. They're all contracted. And the best country, you know, it's a classic one, the Philippines. Um, we just find we've, we've not tried many other countries yet. Um, I know South Africa is good. I know that there's there's some other countries that, that are good as well. India is great for one-off jobs I've found. Uh, so if you want something really specific and a, maybe like development, something like that. But for long-term loyal employees, if you like, they're still contracted, but they're, they're long-term with you. Uh, Philippines has been great. And we hire using onlinejobs.ph and we just um, manage them really well through a software called Hubstaff. It pays them, tracks their hours, and it's, yeah, really seamless. Awesome. Yeah, I, I've had a lot of issues over the last, especially over COVID, I think it was probably, um, with just VAs in general disappearing and, you know, not clocking in the hours and right. things like that. So yeah. it, it's it's been a pretty hard transition to try and get new VAs that were just as good as the old ones that seemingly disappeared yeah. overnight and things, right? So we've been trying to outsource to specific agencies recently. So finding agencies right. that are in the Philippines or in Macedonia, which is where a lot of our writers have been coming from recently, and then hiring them on a contract basis that we pay them X per month for individual staff and just get them onboarded. And they can pre-train and things as well. So it actually helps quite quite a lot. But it's it's um it's considerably a bit more expensive than the previously uh, when we were doing our own hiring and things. But again, I don't want to be sitting on interview calls with VAs anymore and stuff, right? Um, yeah. So kind of moving back into the agency side of things, I, yep. because you deal with so many different agencies and so many different clients, this year specifically, a lot of people have been talking about content being devalued, links mm -hmm. potentially not being a top three ranking factor, even though they probably still mm -hmm. are, and various mm -hmm. other things as well, right? Um, so yep. are you seeing agencies, individual agencies that is, buying more or less links for clients this year? So we're seeing agencies buy more links. Um we actually did a survey a few months ago when we surveyed uh, our agency clients and we've got, you know, a lot of agency clients. Um, maybe, you know, if you if you count the agencies that order from us actively, it's maybe around 3,000 active who are ordering every single month. So when we sent out the survey, we got quite, quite a good data set. And one of the questions was, you know, are you planning to outsource more link building in the coming, you know, 12 to 18 months? And it was around 60 to 70% saying yes. So we've seen that in sales as well. We've seen the volumes go up. Um, I think mainly because, because of the introduction of AI content and it's sort of leveling the playing field and everyone can write a brilliant piece of content now. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, how, how good or bad your English is. You can create a really good piece of content, grammatically correct, using an AI tool. So what's left to distinguish, you know, what what's a good piece of content? It's the links going to that piece of content. So we're seeing people put more value in links, whether Google are or not, and they're saying it's a, not a top three ranking factor. You know, Google say a lot of things and they always have done. We're seeing that actually SEOs in general are valuing links more because of this new AI, you know, introduction of that. Yeah, so that was part of my next question, actually. Um, okay. I, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of agencies, especially kind of service-based agencies this year that have gone under. So a lot of content agencies, a lot of um, agencies that were, you know, fulfilling small link orders and, and small content orders and small service offerings and things like that. And essentially, they've just been replaced overnight by AI tools. If, even if it's not content, AI tools can now do a lot of coding and things for you, a lot of graphic design and all sorts of things that these productized and service-based agencies before were doing individually themselves. And they just got yep. effectively, you know, 90% of their revenue lost in, within a week or two. Um, yep. How has AI affected your content business? So, yeah, it affected it quite a lot at the start, especially when all the tools were getting really popular and everyone was talking about, oh, you, ju you can just use this tool now. You don't need writers, you know, people firing off the writing teams. We we saw maybe about a 50% drop in content sales initially. What was really interesting was after the initial buzz had uh, calmed down a little bit, we've got two tiers of content. We've got a basic option. We've got a pro option. Pro is for, you know, uh, five-star writers. They, they get rated within the system and they're the best writers. So we were seeing a big increase in pro writing and a huge drop-off in basic, which said to me, the people who didn't have the budget, they were moving to their AI tools. And the people that did have the budget, they were really valuing human content more. So just lately, over the, over the last month or so, I did a tweet the other day saying that 
orders were 30 percent up from this from the downside so i'm not sure if we've seen a bit of a shift in perspective on on the ai stuff or maybe some people are valuing human content again we're not sure but we, we've kept a bit of a stance on, on our ai content we're not allowing our writers to to use it for the for the most part we're, we're allowing them to use it for you know planning or what research or whatever they want to do but for the writing side we're obviously it's a zero percent tolerance on using ai just because we think it's important to our clients it's not a personal view you know i think ai content can can be great and useful in some cases um but our clients are agencies and they've got clients so we have to take care of you know two sets of, of clients really so that's just the stance we've took on it but yeah we've seen a bit of a resurgence in content now yeah i, I definitely yeah I, I definitely kind of agree i see a lot of people who it, literally I, I think they also massively regret to fire off their writing teams and things like that because yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Have the, yeah, they have these knowledgeable people that have the expertise and the the you know the research that they now have to go and do with all these new people train them up on the topic do all this and this stuff from where exactly. they just and, kept the super same people before and also yeah like your writers the people who can really write they're the ones who can best use their ai tools so mm -hmm. like far off your writing team and then hiring new people to use the tools is probably a bad idea you should use your best writers to use their ai tools if you're going to go down that, that route yeah 100 percent. and i think you can also if you get if you kind of train some of your existing writers in working with ai tools to update your content that's where you're starting yeah. to see a lot of efficiency out of your writers you know in, instead of before maybe they were updating one or two pages a day they can do that in an hour now so it allows yeah. the efficiency to just go through the roof um, and, like, and like i said google's slightly devalued content anyway and things like that so ha having that ability to produce more of it and at a more efficient rate and maybe you know updating things quicker and stuff actually allows you to bring some of that value back from the content that google kind of removed so have you got any plans to integrate ai yourselves into service offerings maybe not maybe not S uh, content writing and stuff but link building or video or image generations or anything like that um not currently just just from a pure perspective standpoint that we don't want to be seen to be to be devaluing any of our services um because because that's the kind of perspective agencies will have on it we, we think um that's not to say we won't use it for some processes uh we do actually have i, I mentioned earlier we have a content plan service that relies heavily on our ai to you know for the clustering for the briefing of the content for the generating the titles that we suggest so we are using it in those in those sort of ways but in terms of actual client work we we haven't got any plans to integrate it just yet um we may launch a service which is ai assisted content we may do we, we're not sure about it um but that will be essentially we have very well trained writers who are using ai and therefore creating content so much faster you know instead of writing one article in two hours or three hours they can write five or six so the cost savings will then be passed on to the client. So there is opportunity for that. Um, but but right now, no immediate plans. Okay, yeah. It, it, it makes a lot of sense, to be honest. I think actually the the kind of next generative or next generation, sorry, of generative models, where it's just going to be video and image based, that's when a lot of agencies are going to be forced into basically having to yeah. use it because otherwise you, you're you just going to be losing the efficiency. And they're going to be agencies that are going to be operating at 10 to 100 times faster than you because they're using that technology. Um, but obviously we're not there yet. Thank God, to be honest, because yeah. it would be very scary if the AI was progressing. And it's already scary how fast it's progressing. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad we don't quite have it yet. Um, so scary. kind of moving away from the AI stuff, how how have you guys improved your sales processes since you started the agency? So, yeah, we, we've always had a really slick sales process. We From the start, we wanted it to operate like a, an e-commerce store. We wanted it to be no phone calls, no emails, no you know, what about this? What about that? We just wanted a storefront with an offering and you come on and you buy it. We used to use, um, oh, what do we use? WooForms, something like that. When we first started, we used like a WordPress plugin, which it we could like specify the inputs and then have a really simple payment process. And it was really good. It worked for a while um, until we integrate our own system, uh, which was basically like, like a form builder and it connected to... Um, connected to like a payment process but then the inputs go into our system so it's really easy um 
these days you've got things like SPP, which is you know brilliant for for productized agencies. Um, I think yourself, you're using Shopify, right? Uh, yeah, Shopify. Yeah, custom which, Shopify build. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that you that's quite good as well with the inputs and stuff if you can customize it well enough. Um, but in terms of sales, yeah, we we haven't changed from day one that we wanted it to be a sort of just you don't need to speak to us. We, the website should be so uh, descriptive that you know exactly what it is you're buying. The form should be so simple that you know exactly what what to give us, what information, and then we're going to tell you when it's done, what you're going to get, and then we deliver on it every time. So. The sales process kind of feeds, it, feeds into itself. I think agencies, once they've ordered from us a few times, they build that trust and the, the reliability and they can use us for their deliverables. You know, we're not some seller on Fiverr. We're not someone on Upwork where you don't know if they're going to go missing or, you know, we're not a website with no faces on it. All our team are on our website. We, we're here in Birmingham. Come come to our office if you want. Do you know what I mean? So it's that kind of trust yeah. that's built up. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I get it. I I... I... Two points there as well. I used to use Woo and Ninja Forms myself, so those are definitely the the old days. One of the ways that we used to actually try and get sales, recurring sales at least, would be to work with larger corporates and try and get on their preferred vendor list. So that whenever mm. someone would order something in, inside their own company, they just Google looking for SEO or links or blog posts, whatever it was on their internal search um, intranet. And it would then come up with yeah. the preferred vendors being us or another agency or whatever it was. And they would just automatically order off of us. And that means that whenever that company acquires another company and that then gets put yeah. into their intro- internet system, you're then their default provider as well. So but that was a, a massive kind of um, upgrade for us because it allowed us to just have automated billing and things and clients without having to do any sales at all for years yeah, at a time as well. Yeah. That's, that's um, one thing we, have, we haven't explored much is like uh, recurring, any recurring products, something we want to really focus on this year. Um, well, we found, it's funny you say like preferred preferred vendor and all stuff like that. We've, we've actually found that working with like these really big, we're currently going through a, a bit of a process with a, a public company and the, the process is so long, like long winded and like yeah. so many forms to fill in. It's almost like it's not worth it. Yeah. It's yeah, it's so much red tape and things to get through. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just a pain in the ass. I know. Yeah. And then, and then when you actually, yeah. Once you're on the list, I suppose it's, it's all plain sailing from there, but it's yeah, yeah the initial the yeah, the, the, the initial ass kissing basically is what makes it the worst part. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So the last question that I had for you, which is probably the toughest one to be fair, um, and yeah. it's kind of a two-in-one question as well. What do you think yeah. is the future for SEO agencies as a whole? And should they? do you yeah. think they should be diversifying their offerings? And do you think they should be diversifying into other search engines aside from Google as well? Hmm. So yeah, I, I think there's been a lot of... Um, hysteria since the ai stuff has come and all these predictions that google will no longer be serving results or just be serving answers and stuff like that i think it's been very overhyped i think search will exist for the foreseeable future well i think search will always exist people always be searching for things and they'll need a search engine to give them a list of options to pick from i think whether that looks like a 10 blue link serp or whether it looks like a dynamic answer panel i don't know but what I do know is there'll always be a way to optimize to be higher up in that in that result. So SEO engines shouldn't stop optimizing for search. Um, I think search will always be around. It will categorize and order results in terms of authority. Um, so whether that's links or whether that's building a really good brand or getting mentions around the web, whichever way you want to spin it, you'll always need to do some kind of promotion to get higher up in these answer panels. Um, diversifying for other search engines, yeah. I mean, why not? I, but I think you're doing kind of the same thing um, for Google as you would be to Bing. You know, maybe some slightly different uh, signals, but I think as long, as long as you're doing all the things, all the right things, you know, looking at SEO like a holistic marketing channel, you know, you've got to get good branding, you've got to get good content, good links, you know, you can have the best links in the world, but if your content's bad, you're not going to rank. The same goes if you've got the best content, but you've got no links, you know, you're not, no one's going to see it organically anyway. So, yeah, to answer, to summarize that, I think the future of SEO engines is, is bright. I think search will exist and AI is just going to change things a little bit. Um, it'll change the way that the answers are presented or the listings are presented. 
diversifying into other search engines. Why not? Yeah, I think I think they should. Um, and I think moving into like a more holistic brand kind of promotion rather than just link building for link building's sake, search engines, uh, sorry, SEO agencies should look at doing more brand marketing for, for SEO's sake. That would be my answer yeah. to that one. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I agree. And I also think that there's a lot to be said for the work that you're doing that feeds into those other marketing channels anyway. So you might as well be yes. adapting them as well. So the holistic approach just means everything feeds into each other, right? So yeah. it allows you to create it. And there's all this psychology around once people have seen your brand three times and once they've engaged with your brand and things like that, then they are it's more likely to buy and all sorts of things, right? So just being able yeah. to have that whole holistic approach reinforces that with the end user as well. So I appreciate yeah. you coming on, coming on the channel and hopefully we'll get to speak again and hopefully I get to meet up with you next year in Dubai. Oh, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, yeah. I appreciate you coming on the channel. Is there anywhere where people can find you online? Yes, you can find me at Fat Joe Davis on Twitter or go to joedavis.com and you'll see all the links there. Of course, fatjoe.com too. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you coming on and make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.